Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I wasn't planning on filming a video and then I found out uh, two, well, yeah, um, two days ago that I have COVID and I don't say I'm fine. Don't give me any sympathy, it's fine. But basically means I'm stuck at uni for uh, however long it takes to get rid of this because it is the Easter holidays at the moment. But I guess I'll just have to go home in a few more days instead of today was when I was supposed to be going home. Anyway, well, instead of feeling sorry for myself, I'll try and be productive, film a video. Um, and that's what I do now. So I've drawn it all up, what I want to paint. Oh, this video will just be a nice chatty paint with me sort of situation. So hopefully um, you'll find it relaxing or you'll want to you'll be doing some drawing alongside me whilst this video is on in the background. Um, but I drew this quite a while ago now for it's about a tote bag competition at my university. It was like you design a tote bag for them to put onto like that they give out at open days and I designed what I think is quite lovely. It didn't win. Um, sad times, sad times. I think it's because didn't win because they wanted a design which had the logo bigger and more front and centre whereas my logo is here and I made it kind of more integrated into design which I thought was cool and good and unique but apparently they did not. <laughs> Can you tell I'm salty? Anyway this is why this is here because it's just covering up the name of my university. I had to redesign it a little bit because obviously I didn't want to do a painting with my university logo in it so I drew another flower to replace where the logo was and just added a little ladybird and some books. But I think this is really cute. I did it all green because it was, it had to be um, monotone. Oh, yeah, it had to be monotone for the tote bag competition. But obviously I can do it to whatever color I want now. So I did a color mock, which is here. I'll pop it up on screen. Did this on Photoshop yesterday, find out all the colors. And hopefully now that everything's figured out color wise and I've had the sketch already done, it should be pretty smooth sailing. All I have to do is kind of copy what I've done. I think I'm still a little bit unsure whether to do it in gouache or watercolor. These here, these are my watercolor and then these are my gouache. Put this back in which obviously I've squirted into these uh, little pans and they've dried out. I also have the gouache in tubes if I want to use it wet. I'll probably do that for the white because the white is much better when it's wet. Um, so I don't know if I'll just stick to all watercolour with this or if I want to do all gouache or if I want to do a mix of the two. I really don't know. I'm thinking all watercolour but then I'll use white gouache to help me out with highlights is what I'm thinking but then I could also change mind. I'll just figure it out as I go. Um, first, before I get painting, I want to use masking fluid, which I will get. Da -da -da -da. Now I have Windsor Newton a masking fluid, which I think I will paint onto all the bits which are on the flowers, just to make it a little bit easier. Because if I paint all down, then I can paint the flowers really easy because they're just kind of block colours, but I want to add like variation in the colours. Um, so I'll just mask them off and then I'll paint all the little details afterwards. I was thinking about what I could talk about for this video and then I hit 10,000 followers on Instagram, crazy. So I thought I would celebrate by doing a little bit of a Q a Q&A. So I put a thing up on my Instagram story asking for questions and you guys delivered. I got lots and lots of questions. I won't be able to get through them all, but to be honest, a lot of them were kind of repeat questions. I will get answering some questions whilst you're watching me do this painting. I actually really like the way this painting turns out and I really want to turn it into a print. I think it'll look really nice as an A4 print. First one, we have, uh, what are your plans after uni? There's quite a few, like, plans after uni questions. Well, at the moment, obviously things can change, but at the moment, I really want to, like, when I leave uni, just really focus all my attention on, on like, the Art With M stuff that I've got going on. So I have the Etsy shop, and I know that if I give it my full attention, I can get, get a lot more from it, and it could get a lot bigger. And I just think, if I gave my full attention to making YouTube videos um, and doing it my Etsy shop and maybe doing live streams, um, possibly a Patreon, but I don't, I don't want to get ahead of myself there. I don't know. I think I just want to give it a really good go. Obviously, I might have to get like a, a an, another job at the same time to be able to do all that stuff whilst it's like because it's quite small at the moment but I know that if I give it my full attention like I'm hopeful that I can get it to grow um, and also well I'd like to do that alongside getting commissions off of companies and just like doing commissions in general so I'm going to paint a, I'm going to paint a perfect picture for you right now of what I want to do <laughs> I want to leave uni really focus on making YouTube videos um, making loads and loads of art 
like art is always gonna come first you know I'm not I'm not like I, I don't like to think of myself as like ugh, a youtuber Blech. I'm, I'm no I'm not that I'm an artist who just so happens to make videos of the art I make um, and I really want to get better and improve at art and, and show the process and really focus on my Etsy shop and like live streaming and just kind of growing my platform um, and at the same time doing commissions and fingers crossed hopefully that will be enough to pay for food and things like that um, that, that would be the dream but like I said I, I might have to get like a, like a part-time job at the same time to be able to do that a lot of artists do that in the beginning like it's really normal for people to do art and then like a part-time job on the side just whilst like they build a name for themselves anyway that's a very long-winded answer <laughs> Next question, is there an art medium you've always wanted to try but haven't had the chance to yet? Um, I feel like I'm kind of very well versed when it comes to art mediums, like I've, I've tried a lot of things. Um, but there's one thing that I haven't actually properly tried and I really want to give like pottery a go. Um, obviously I do like clay magnets but I mean like proper, proper clay stuff, like making mugs just for fun like not for like any not to sell or anything I just want to make a mug and paint it to put my pencils in yeah that's something I'd like to like on like the the spinning wheels I think that'd be dead fun whenever I'm on holiday and you see those little pottery painting places I always think oh I'd love to do that but they're usually aimed towards little kids <laughs> but hey, I am going on holiday in a few days so fingers crossed we'll see a pottery place and I can do some pottery <laughs> I just want to paint a pot that's all I want <laughs> Oh, I was talking in the, the start of this video that I had COVID and it's been, I'm doing this voiceover quite a few days later and I'm now COVID free. Yay, celebrations. So I'm going home this evening and I'm really excited about that because I want to see my people. Art materials. This next question, art materials, recommendations would be good. Um, I kind of swear by Windsor and Newton. I just think they're a really good brand. They're reasonably priced and they just get the job done. Every single paint I own, watercolour, acrylic, oil paint, gouache, they're all Windsor and Newton and I, I don't have any complaints. It's probably like, probably is like better stuff out there but Windsor and Newton has never failed me. <laughs> I really like it. Um, coloured pencils, I have Faber-Castells, Polychromos, they're a bit pricey but they are good for, for what you get. Yeah, them kind of I go to things that I always go to. Oh, sketchbooks. I always get people asking me what sketchbook, which, woo, what sketchbooks I use and I absolutely love C. White of Brighton. Every single sketchbook I have is C. White of Brighton because I absolutely love it. They're honest, they're like really cheap as well. You can get, I'm not sure if it's still the same price now, but you can get like an A4 sketchbook with like loads of pages for around seven pound if you go on ebay you can probably get it for five pound um and they're good mixed media like i use watercolor i use gouache um i've done acrylic in there like if it's a good sketchbook i mean like the pages kind of warp a little bit but you know it's to be expected it's a sketchbook um yeah i really recommend see what are brighton sketchbooks what kind of music do you like do you listen to music while you work uh m most of the time to be honest i listen to um, I'm into podcasts, well I'm into a singular podcast, uh, you know, you, you might have heard of them, Rob Beckett and Josh Widdicombe, they're pretty big comedians in England and they have a podcast called Lockdown Parents in Hell, actually I think it's just called Parents in Hell now, anyway, absolutely love it, it's a really good giggle, I mean it's about like them being, well I say it's about them being parents but most of the time they're just talking about random things and it's just a good laugh. My favourite episodes are the ones where it's just them two speaking because they have like, they'll do a celebrity one episode then the next episode will just be them two um, and I just prefer the ones where it's them two, I think, I don't know, they're just, it's just very funny. There's been multiple moments where I've been laughing out loud in public because of the podcast, it's a really good listen. Anyway, music, I'm just, I don't know, I don't really listen to music that often but when I do, like I have a playlist and it's just kind of all upbeat, upbeat pop music from loads of different time periods <laughs> um yeah just anything that you can dance to and have a little bop uh, that's what i like anything upbeat i'm not really into slow songs yeah i've also been watching a lot of um minecraft relax they call it like relaxing minecraft long plays uh, my favorite um youtuber for that is called infinite drift and they just make the most relaxing long plays it's just like minecraft noise there's no speaking and it's just the noise of the minecraft and they end up making like a really nice building at the end of it so that's what i'm into uh, that's what i listen to in the background <laughs> when i'm doing art um can you drive no i'm sure one day i will probably have to learn how to drive but i'm not like in a rush to learn it just doesn't really interest me at the moment. I I can and there's not where nowhere I really want to go, 
that's not within like walking distance so I can just get the bus or like the train so yeah eventually one day probably but not now <laughs> why did you decide to make a YouTube channel that's a big question uh, well I made my YouTube channel going on like six years ago now and I remember rightly I made it because I was just really bored it was the summer holidays I was getting so bored and Obviously I was really interested in YouTube and I was really interested in art and I remember my brother just saying why don't you just make art YouTube videos and like something just clicked in my brain where I was like yeah you know what I'll give that a go and my old videos god they're rubbish if you go back and watch them they are they're quite cringy but I mean I don't please don't do that <laughs> I haven't taken the videos down because I don't know I just feel like it's nice for people to see the journey even though I would quite like to take them down because they are they're cringy <laughs> um but I'll keep them up just so you can see the growth I suppose but yeah I just made it because I was bored and then just keep kept on making videos and before you knew it six years have passed and I've got uh, how many do I have like 22 subs 22 subscribers <laughs> 22,000 subscribers which is amazing so yeah that's just all started out of being bored Hello, it's now the next day. I took a little break from painting because uh, it was getting a little little bit late and I was just a bit tired. So I'm starting again this morning. I thought I'd just do a bit of real time speaking to to break up the voiceovers. Um, so this is how far I've managed to get. I'm really liking the way it looks, although obviously it's not finished. So it's not like this is still a way to go. Uh, and I need to remember that because I'm thinking, oh, it's not really looking the way I want it to look. It's just probably because it's not finished yet. Um, I kind of have purposely been making it messy because that's what I'm trying to, I just really like the look of something that's a little bit wobbly. So I've been purposely trying to like have some wobbly bits, but I don't think I've, I've done enough wobble. <laughs> so I might try and add a little bit more wobble today. Um, yeah, I sharpened on my pencils yesterday. Um, can you tell that I'm getting a, bit, a little bit bored in uh, isolation? <laughs> uh, these aren't all my pencils, there's a lot more in the tin, but doesn't that look nice? I got this mug from Paper Chase and I think it's the best thing I own. I absolutely love it. I saw this mug and I usually, I'm not, usually don't really buy that much stuff, but this was the one thing I was like, right, this is it. I'm putting my foot down, I'm actually going to buy something. This is, this is, I need this in my life. I love it so much and it looks really cute next to my little bird mug. Look at that little setup there. Do you like my elephants? I keep bringing them in for decoration because they just look cute. Right, I'm going to get painting again. I'm going to tackle the fairies and then I think I'm going to use my pencils to add lines around things, but I don't want to add too many lines. Um, just only where it needs it. And then hopefully it should be done because it is quite simple, just kind of block colours. But as you can see, like I'm trying to add like variation. Like instead of painting this all just one colour of yellow, I'm making sure there's different ones so if you can hear background noise I got my windows open um it's a plane going past right I'm gonna get painting and I will speak to you in a second Uh, carrying on with the questions did you struggle to pick which course to do at uni um i'm going next year after my foundation year oh yeah i did a foundation year as well uh purely just because i couldn't decide what course to do i was stuck between illustration or fine art and looking back at it now i'm like how is fine art even a, a contender in my head because i'm just so illustration is just so obviously what i want to do i don't know why i was even debating fine art i mean no offense to fine art if you're you know it's a nice subject but it's just just not for me um so I, that foundation year really made me realize yeah fine art isn't what i want to be doing <laughs> illustrations kind of um, more my more my speed yeah so that's, that's how I decided I took foundation realized it weren't for me and illustration was um, yeah if you're struggling to pick a course I don't know what to do I really recommend a foundation year they're really helpful and it means when you get to uni you're you've got an extra year of education under your belt so you, you can kind of feel a little bit more confident and not as like 
overwhelmed with the work I suppose because you're kind of used to it because foundation eases you in um anyway <laughs> moving on uh, do you feel more pressure to post with a larger following or do you not think about it I still consider myself to have quite a small like following I, I i still think it's quite a, like a small community so i don't really feel that pressure plus you plus you guys are so nice that i never like worry about posting something because it's going to get like a mean comment because i think i've had like one mean comment in the existence of you me doing youtube videos so yeah i never really have to worry about that just because it's such a nice community sometimes i'll post something up to instagram and it doesn't really get as many likes as i was hoping it would but i don't know i just need to remind myself that as long as i like the art and i'm happy with it then it doesn't really matter because you never really know what's happened like with the algorithm maybe instagram's just not really shown many people you post that day so i don't really get hung up on the numbers because there's been so many videos that i've made as well which i thought oh that's a really good video i'm really happy with that and it doesn't really get that many views compared to other ones which i'm not really that proud of but I don't know, just gotta forget about the numbers I suppose. Any tips for finding your art style? I uh, don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't really say I have an art style. I feel like it changes every single time I paint something. Oh, I've just looked at the video, oh I've nearly spoken for this whole thing. Oh I should have made this video longer, I didn't realise we were near the end. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have an art style I don't think, you might think I do but I don't. And I wouldn't stress yourself out too much about it, like make art how you want to make it in that moment and over time you'll look back at the pieces you've made and you'll just figure out what you like and what you don't and it'll just kind of happen on its own I suppose because that's what I'm kind of doing at the moment and my art style's changing every day right yeah we're at the end of the video I can't believe how quickly that's gone by uh, I have a lot more questions to answer but I've run out of time thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this little video that I made kind of on a whim I weren't expecting to make this video um but yeah thanks very much for watching goodbye Thank you.